Treasure Island Dizzy is a puzzle video game published in 1989 by Codemasters for the Amstrad CPC and ZX Spectrum, and later ported to the Commodore 64, NES, Amiga, Atari ST and Atari Jaguar, too. Treasure Island Dizzy is the second game in the Dizzy series, and is the sequel to Dizzy, the ultimate cartoon adventure. The game was developed by the Oliver Twins with graphics being designed by Neil Adamson and music by David Whittaker. This game is quite different from its predecessor, with a new inventory system and improved animations. The game contains fewer enemies than the previous title. It is more centered on inventory-based problem solving. The aim of the game is to solve various puzzles in order to obtain a boat so that Dizzy can return to his friends and family, the Yoke Folk. To do this Dizzy must journey through haunted mines and tree villages, as well as underwater. The game also features a subquest, albeit one essential to completing the game, in which 30 gold coins must be collected. Such subquests were found in many of the sequels. Critics consider this one of the most difficult Dizzy games as the energy bar system of later titles was not yet implemented and Dizzy is provided with only one life, contrasting with 5 in the first game and 3 in Fantasy World Dizzy, the immediate sequel, and most subsequent titles. Also unique to this game, the player is unable to select any particular item from the inventory for use, Dizzy simply puts down whichever item is at the top of the list. If Dizzy is underwater and the snorkel happens to be at the top of the inventory list, he will drop the snorkel when the player collects another item and instantly die. Treasure Island Dizzy therefore requires more foresight and planning than the other games in the series. Adding to the difficulty of the game was the fact that the player had two main tasks to complete, the escape from the islands, and the collection of the 30 coins. Upon escaping the final island, the shopkeeper character appears and tells Dizzy that he cannot leave without finding all 30 coins. Given that a number of the coins were hidden behind scenery, this second task proved to be more difficult than the main game. Commodore format printed a complete solution and map which did not include the hidden coins, frustrating many players. In the beginning there was Dizzy. For those of you not acquainted with the little chappy, where were you when we featured him on our cover cassette just a few short months ago in AA37? Dizzy is the Oliver Twins egg-shaped character who bounces around with a stupid grin on his face, getting himself into trouble all the time and generally finding life rather too much to cope with. Just think of Pat McDonald and you won't be far wrong. Anyway, as I said before there was Dizzy, and now there is Treasure Island Dizzy. We're promised, or threatened with might be a better phrase, a whole string of sequels, Dizzy, The Yokes on Us, Dizzy, Eccentric Millionaire and dozens of others, a tenor for the best top 10 rotten egg puns at the usual address. If you bought Dizzy, or you read our Codemasters profile in AA36 or you played the AA Special Edition you'll know already what to expect. It's a sideways, scrolling flick screen game, with Dizzy bouncing or walking along and confronting various obstacles and difficulties. Your first problem, for instance, is how to get an egg CIT off the beach. And neither of the two options available to you seem very hopeful. On your right is the sea, and, as the instructions point out, everyone knows that eggs are air breathers, oh really? But if you jog or bounce leftwards, you come to a cliff, that's enough mince pies and wine, head. The solution would seem to involve that empty wooden chest you see over there. I shall say no more, except that anyone who can stand on their chest must be a contortionist. Still, it's a step in the right direction. Having solved that one, you amble along nicely for a while, collecting tubes of toothpaste, clumps of mushrooms and copies of Sinclair Abuser, surely that can't be of any use, can it? The joke, by the way, is an Oliver Twins complaint about what happened when Dizzy visited Sinclair User and had the stuffing knocked out of him, literally. As usual there's the traditional Oliver Twins voice synthesized phrase at the beginning of the game. For a change it's crystal clear, and you can distinctly hear the phrase. Hubba lubba lub. Tell me, does anyone else apart from the Olivers and their Codemasters chums really think a couple of garbled words add significantly low the game's attraction? There's a gorgeously mindless little tune, 
courtesy of David Whitaker, playing incessantly that will pretty soon have your mum chewing the carpet, but other than that there aren't any sound effects. Controls are fairly basic, Z, X, space and enter for left, right, jump and pick up slash drop or use respectively. Or alternatively you can use the joystick. Your mission, as Dizzy stuck on this treasure island, is to escape. There are two routes, one tricky, and one even trickier. The first is to find a way off the island and, as the Twee scenario puts it, back to the yoke folk. The other is to collect all 30 pieces of treasure that be scattered about the place. This is by no means as easy as it sounds, for some of them lie in apparently inaccessible places, and others are hidden under other things. In reality, of course, the real aim of the game as far as you're concerned is to wander around collecting treasure as you explore your island. You catch sight of an interesting looking area, only to find that you can't get there, which, of course, makes you want to find out what's there all the more, and your immediate objective becomes to find a way to it. Take care, however, for you only have one life. You can be bouncing along quite happily, for instance, when all of a sudden you get clobbered by a huge cage dropping out of the sky. Not a thing you can do about it either, except pick yourself up, dust yourself down, and start all over again. It's all tremendously exciting, ouch. It can hardly be said that Treasure Island dizzy. If you want strategy, hard intellectual effort or the opportunity to blast away at dozens of aliens or soldiers, steer clear. This ain't no Microprose gunship, and it ain't no Op Wolf and either. But if you know the Oliver Twins work and enjoy it, you'll need no further recommendation. I liked it. It has good graphics and the music is a cheerful little tune. It's easy to start playing, though the controls aren't very sensitive. You should get more than one life, because it's a bit too difficult and a pain to have to go back to the beginning every time. Overall I think it's brilliant for the price. I'll probably buy it myself. A version for the Nintendo Entertainment System was published by Camerica as part of the video game compilation Quattro Adventure. This version was released for the Evercade handheld game system in October 2020 as part of the Oliver Twins collection compilation cartridge. Codemasters released a version of Treasure Island Dizzy from Microsoft Windows on the company's website in December 2004. Available for download after registration, it was in fact the Commodore 64 version bundled with the CCS64 emulator in a single executable. The download is no longer available. The game spent over two years in the Gallup All Formats Top 40. The ZX Spectrum version alone sold over 100,000 copies and was voted the 16th best Spectrum game of all time in a special issue of your Sinclair magazine in 2004.